Hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to take part in this GCSMUS Smooth Kickoff event, even if only from very far away and on an online modus. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Sao Paulo, where I coordinate the Center for Studies and Research on the Sociology of Space and Time. Moreover, I'm an alumna of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, a Productivity Research Fellow of the Brazilian Research Council, and a life member of Clare Hall College at the University of Cambridge. As for why we do need a global network of discourse on social science methodology, I would like to point out that it offers one at once handy and useful set of tools to scientific disciplines concerned with the empirical application of knowledge to very concrete social, political and technological issues throughout the planet, architecture, urban design, engineering, law, education, psychology, etc. It helps researchers and practitioners from all over the world to organize their thoughts, as it were, regarding both the problems they aim to solve in practical terms and the operational procedures implicit in the identification of answers to these problems. This is a methodological benefit from social scientific methodologies. This benefit, in the case of a global network, stems precisely from the intercultural promise, as it were, of a global network of discourse of science on science, social scientific methodologies. Methods, after all, presuppose that the researchers who make use of them embed themselves in spatial and temporal terms into the empirical context that they aim to understand with the aid of precisely these methods. In my opinion, this intercultural methodological support is the difference that such a global network makes in the implementation of SDG number 11. To put it briefly, social scientific methodologies bear in themselves the promise of a social cultural rootedness, which is more than necessary in order to put into action rooted systematic transformations towards a better lived uh, urban reality all over, throughout the world, and particularly in urban public spaces. And hence, it's also a possibility, this the social cultural rootedness is a possibility to fight greenwashing. From the standpoint point of social scientific methodologies, greenwashing is an outcome of socially superficial conceptions about sustainability. To sum it up, greenwashing is the result of not taking the interculturality of social scientific methodologies into consideration. Social scientific methods are simultaneously products and producers of rooted gazes on the ways in which people live cities and particularly urban public spaces. These methods help to identify patterns of lived urban space, which may help practitioners to conceive rooted future urban realities to be lived by people in urban public spaces. This is precisely the rational that makes it possible for SMOOS to push for this transformative change with the aid of each of its global partners. SMOOS hopes to both spread and put into action qualitative, locally rooted methods for producing disaggregated data on inequality in all its forms and interplays. The concept is spatial quality instead of quantity for the sake of localized, hence sustainable solutions for urban life, especially in urban public spaces. As far as I can see, there is only one major obstacle for bringing together research methods of the social sciences and research methods deployed in design disciplines in urban planning and policy making. The challenge is precisely to identify researchers of all of these disciplines who are willing to cooperate with one another in order to bridge the methodological gap between these areas. And this is precisely what SMOOS has made possible. Indeed, in my opinion, the role of our higher education institutions in better preparing the next generation of practitioners, politicians and researchers for the ongoing and upcoming social environmental polycrisis we've been living in is twofold. 
On the one hand, these institutions play a crucial role in furthering the, so, the scientific sensitivity of the next generation of practitioners, politicians and researchers for the intercultural complexity of the planet. And this in such a way that these actors become eager for addressing instead of ignoring this complexity for the sake of sustainable solutions. On the, on the other hand, our higher education institutions are unique in offering practitioners, politicians and researchers both technical and logical tools, to put it briefly, methodological tools for putting into action their scientific sensitivity. Many thanks and have a nice evening.